Yeah. yeah, but the thing is, the way this works, you don't have to know his specific key. Once you import it into your system, you get it off the key server, then you just what say key server? It, his public key, public key. His public key, right? Okay. Right. You get his public key, and you say, you say. Uh, Encrypt it, yes, means encrypt for Matt uh, or your lawyer, and then the file name. So once this is encrypted, only Matt or your your lawyer will be able to decrypt it. But Matt uses his public key, that's how it works. Correct. And GPG knows, because you've imported his key in, GPG knows that you can, or knows what his key is. So you don't have to say, I use this. Six or twenty-six digit key. Right. You know, you just say Matt, and then it does it. So, what would you have to have done to store Matt's public you, key on your system in order for that to work? I, I, I just, you know, I, I just installed Tony's public key on mine. It's real simple. I just, yeah. What, so, what what did you is, have to type? That has to go into your key ring, right? Yeah, I, I typed. Uh, GPG, GPG space dash dash search dash keys space and then Tony Bemis in quotes. That's what and I then it searches all I the, oh. And it went out to the key server, found Tony Bemis, came back with a description, uh, some information about you, including that eight digit uh, hex string, the ID. Yes. The end of a longer string. Uh, and, and offered that up as a choice. I said that's the one I want, and it imported it into my key ring. Yes, yeah, so you and, can do it over the command line. There's there, easier ways is, to do it with the Where did you put the equivalent of math in there in, in when it was putting in your key rank? Uh, I think it gave it a name of Tony. If Bemis. I'm the only Tony in his key rank, yeah. then he can just type Tony and it'll encrypt it for me. But if there are two Tonys, then he, it would be Tony. I'll, I'll encrypt the file. Yeah, but I want to try and just put in Tony. While he's doing that, uh, you said you can only do a file, uh, zip files included? Yeah. yeah, you can do zip or tar files. Yeah. So you can take an entire folder, tar it down, and have, and, 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 and uh, compress it. You know, And then you encrypt that file. And then only, so you say you have your whole uh, business plan, you know, which is 500 files in text or you know, yeah. LibreOffice documents or whatever. And you can encrypt that all uh, in one file. Along with that question, as the files get longer, does the encryption decryption time increase drastically or just slightly? Just slightly, because it uses that the lower bit encryption to actually encrypt the size of the file, and the high bit encryption is done just on that random key that it creates during encryption. The random key is the public or the private? It's random. It's neither. It's it's a one-time use. Right. Yeah. It, it's an additional info that it uses to encrypt. So that that's where it makes it even harder to decrypt or to uh, brute force to try to decrypt files. Um, and that's why it's so white or so white opposed to other systems. Um, anyway. So then the next thing you want to do. Get your keys signed. There's a whole idea of the web of trust around using GPG and the public keys. Uh, so what you want to do is the web of trust is you know I know these five people and I'm going to sign their keys and then say I know you guys, but uh, you know one other person, you know Jim, knows them too, but doesn't have my key and he sees two other Tonys out there. And, but he sees Jim and Jim and... He sees them out there. Um, on the key server. On the key server. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll go through. Um, I can actually do a demonstration also about how to find keys using the GUI version. Uh, and Seahorse is what I use on my computer. Um, but along with that, it shows who Seahorse signed those find, keys. To find the public, to find the public keys. Right. Is that what AGP is for? No. Yes, AGP can also do that. AGP is the main, um, it's like your key ring for, um, for your Android system. 
so that you go out and search, you tell AGP the, where the key server is. You tell them, search this key server, server for Tony Bemis, and it'll bring up all the Tonys and all the Bemises. Or if you put in that eight character, it'll bring up everybody that has that eight characters in their uh, fingerprint. So the, the way to get your keys signed is that you can do a key sign party or in people you already know. So say if you know it's here, you know just people we know, we each sign our keys. But you go to a, a big conference and you want to get your key signed by as many people as you can, then you can have a party. And with that party, you're going to want to have a, a piece of identification that everybody accepts. You know, so here in Michigan, I would accept the Michigan driver license. Um, you know, if I'm going to Canada or I'm going to uh, over to Europe, I don't know what their driver's license looks like, so I would accept a passport. You know, something that is you know widely known. I mean, if I was doing it at my work, I would accept the work ID of that. And then, along with that identification, then you need that person's um, uh, key fingerprint, right? Tony, so I want to insert a question here, and I'm um, I'm not trying to be stupid or anything, but sure. there's a lot of companies, a lot of people in the world, right? So okay. there's possibly chances you want to do business with people you don't know, you don't have any type of relationship with. So is there a solution for that? Is there a way of two companies that want to do business together to somehow communicate their keys and do that yeah. web of trust? Key servers, that, that's the whole idea with key servers, is you don't have to know each other. If you, want, if you know the person you want to send it to, you go out and grab their, uh, their public key from the key server. And so say Leo Port is a large name, you know a lot of people know him. He has a ton of people that signed it. And there's probably people posing as Leo Laporte also. There's multiple keys out there. So you would look for somebody that you know has signed his key. You know, so that's another you know, way to look yeah, at it. If you trust that person, that person knows Leo Laporte. Right. And it's not by default. Yeah. It's not by default. So if, I, if Jim signed my key, it doesn't mean that he trusts Matt Enders. It just means that both Jim and Matt trust me. Really what it means. There's also that level of trust too. Yes. If you have ultimate trust, you know I absolutely know that it is you or not. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Through that signing. Process. And and that's where you can do, you know, if you know somebody personally, you can say ultimate trust. If you just did through a key signing party and a, and a driver's license, you can say a low level of trust. Rumor monger. <laughs> I mean, so when it is between two different entities, so is there a encoding standard that's already mentioned? Including standard? I think that's all included no. as a part of the key generation. Uh, I, it doesn't automatically include everybody underneath that or everybody associated with that person. Is that what you mean? Uh, or that company? Like, like, say, Ford has a key, and then you say, I automatically trust all Ford employees. <laughs> I, I, it doesn't work like that. It's individual people. I suppose a company could have a GBG key, um, but it, it doesn't work like that. It, it, I don't think it's a, it's not a tiered I mean, system. Like so that. there is like a, use the same so it's uh, it, there is going to be like a localized uh, key, which would be shared globally. As well. Right. Well, it's because, locally cached. And because uh, and it's held because out if I'm the, doing with say. If, uh, I'm, uh, if something's going on with, say, GM itself. And uh, so, because within GM, they have several uh, offices all over, right? So, this could be a situation where they want to circulate the first generated things, like uh, the first generated key to all, all other servers. It's possible. And, and maybe it goes back to what Jim was talking about earlier, that uh, like packages and being sent out, that those are can be authenticated using GPG. <coughs> uh, and so, if you're receiving files from GM, you want to make sure it's from GM instead of from, you know, some random person in India. Then they can send it. You you can use GPG to verify that as long as GM is very. That's signed. complex. It's gonna take long. But I, I I agree on the first point, like you said. So I want to ensure. Yeah. So the, the biggest thing and what I want to focus on right now is. 
one-on-one -on -one communication mm -hmm. using GPG. Uh, so at the key signing party, you want to bring, like you said, an ID that everybody knows and print off co copies of your public key. You can do the full public key, which is prints off of the full-size sheet of paper. Mm -hmm. uh, or you can do just the fingerprint of the key, which is this is the entire fingerprint of a key. Uh, and that's not my key because you can see right here, it's not the same as what I showed earlier. Yeah, what did you profess to Right. Um, and well, to be able to get your key fingerprint, you can export it into a, a text file. So you can say, GPG, export just my fingerprint using this key, which we set up in the environment, uh, and into a file. And you, that's using the, the command line redirects. Um, and then, Why are you appending instead of just uh, redirecting? Because I thought it would be fun. <laughs> I don't know. It, it's just what I typed in there. Um, yeah. or, but actually, what you could do is, if you do use this append, you could change this. Instead of using GPG key, you could use your finger key ID, and then just keep on using, changing just the key ID, and then it'll stick your the multiple fingerprints in a single file. Um, and then you print that off for as many people as you think is going to be at a key signing party. Uh, and then what you do is you, you have that plus your ID, and you walk along in a line, you say, sign my key, sign my key, sign my key, you know, and there's a little bit more to it, but that's that's basically it. Uh, and the, the base idea is you don't have your computer there because you got a bunch of geeks together. It's the likelihood of people are going to try to hack into your computer. <laughs> so you get all these pieces of paper, and you go back home, and then you go through and sign them. Um, uh, yeah, you could you could have your computer with you. You could do it on your phone. Yeah. Um, don't take your life. <laughs> there was there was a key signing party at PenguinCon, but I don't think anybody went. I I was going to go to it, but I got busy with something else. And I really wanted to do it, but uh, it wasn't widely published either. I'm confused. What are you bringing? To, you're bringing a sheet of paper with a sheet of paper with your fingerprint. With